If I had been involved in the instrumentation, I would feel that it's a magnificent piece of music. Robert Plant is the greatest metal vocalist of all time, and right now he is 75 years old. One would think that he should be a living legend, and he should be treated like a king or like a god. But right now, how he lives his life is just sad. Robert Anthony Plant, it's not just a name, it's an icon in the world of rock music. He was born on August 20th, 1948, in the black country town of West Bromwich in England. He was a blessing that was received by his father Robert C. Plant, who was a civil engineer, and his mother Annie Celia, Plant who was a beautiful Romany woman. The Robert Plant we know today is the result of the upbringing by his parent who laid the groundwork for a memorable career that would leave a permanent mark on the music world. Plant's journey into music began when he first heard the rock beats, and instantly he got obsessed with singing and rock and roll. This inspiration and passion for rock was ignited in him by the charisma of the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. When he was growing up in the Haley Green area of Hall Sowen, right in Worcestershire, he found comfort and inspiration in the magical sounds that flooded all around his home. Plant was not just inspired by Elvis Presley. He wanted to be much more than a fanboy. He wanted to match and even rival Elvis Presley. Robert Plant's journey took a different turn when he left his grammar school and entered the lively scene of the English Midlands. It was time that he decided that he wanted to change his life, and instead of pursuing a career as a trainee chartered accountant, he chose to explore the world of music and fell deep into the blue genre. Plant found inspiration in the music of artists like Willie Dixon, Robert Johnson, Skip James, and Sleepy John Estes. These influences shaped his musical path and ignited a passion in him for creating soulful melodies and nostalgic beats. The early years of Plant's in the music industry were not a walk in the park. He had to deal with a lot and had to face countless challenges. His commitment to music was too great to be understood by his parents, and he had to leave his house just when he was a 16-years-old child. He took on the life of a nomadic musician whose only purpose in life was to play music. He went through a lot of bands and honed his skills to the point that matching his music became impossible for others. From laying tarmac on roads for Wimpy in Birmingham to temporary stints at Woolworths in Halesowen Town, Plant never hesitated to do anything when it came to music. It was about time that Plant's life would change, and Lady Luck had to bless him after seeing all of his hard work. So she blessed him with an opportunity to change his life when he got to encounter the drummer, John Bauman. Together, they started a new musical journey. They had a fun run, but it was his invitation by Peter Grant and Jimmy Page to join the Yardbirds that would throw Plant into the depths of rock history. The transformation of the Yardbirds into Led Zeppelin was a new chapter in Plant's life, a chapter that was defined by unrivaled success and artistic innovation. As the lead singer and lyricist of Led Zeppelin, Plant's electrifying stage presence and soulful vocals captivated audiences worldwide and from the late 1960s to the end of the 1970s, Led Zeppelin dominated the music genre when it was crafting timeless classics that would inspire generations for the rest of time. Plant's charismatic personality and raw talent awarded him the status of being one of the greatest singers in rock music. His post-Led Zeppelin performances, which included collaborations with celebrities like Jimmy Page and Alison Krauss, further secured his legacy as a musical legend. From the Grammy-winning album Raising Sand to the revival of the Band of Joy, Plant's artistic evolution continued to mesmerize and inspire countless audiences. The world had no other choice but to recognize all of his immense contributions to music, so Plant and Led Zeppelin were rightfully welcomed into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1995, with honors ranging from being ranked among the best singers of all time by Rolling Stone to being named the greatest metal vocalist of all time by Hit Parader. After the unfortunate event of Led Zeppelin being disbanded in 1980, Robert Plant started a creative solo career that showcased his talent and enduring influence in the world of rock music. Plant's solo journey began with the Honey Drippers. It was a collaboration with former Led Zeppelin guitarist Jimmy Page and other notable musicians. Their debut EP, The Honey Drippers Volume 1, featured deliveries of classic rock and roll songs which also included the most favorite and the hit single, 
Sea of Love. In 1988, Plant released another one of his solo albums, Now and Zen, which finalized his departure from his Led Zeppelin days while still retaining the essence of his unmistakable voice. The album produced hit singles like Tall Cool One and Ship of Fools, and that re-established Plant's status as a legendary solo artist. With Now and Zen, Plant was successful in proving to the world that he can evolve with time and still give out hits. In the 1990s, Plant started new musical adventures, and one of them included his reunion project with Jimmy Page. The duo released two studio albums and a live album that made the world lose its minds with their dynamic chemistry and musical talent. Their Grammy-winning performance in 1998 for Most High was another achievement that highlighted Plant's significance in the ever-changing musical landscape. Now in 2007, Plant was still not letting go of the hype around him, and he shocked the world yet again with his groundbreaking collaboration with bluegrass artist Alison Krauss, which gave birth to the critically acclaimed album called Raising Sand. The album was not just music, it was an art. It blended all the elements of folk, rock, and country music, which earned it widespread acclaim and won the Grammy Award for Album of the Year in 2009. Plant's haunting vocals on tracks like Please Read the Letter proved his ability to adapt to any musical style while still maintaining his signature emotive delivery. His 2010, he got back to his roots when he revived the Band of Joy, and in 2012, Plant formed a new band called The Sensational Space Shifters, which again expanded his sonic palette and showed his lust for exploring new sonic territories. With The Sensational Space Shifters, Plant dived into the world of music influences when he started combining the elements of African rhythms and Middle Eastern instrumentation into his distinctive sound. He was still not done. In 2019, Plant reunited with Alison Krauss for a highly anticipated collaboration, and they did not fail to meet the hype again. Their reunion album, Raise the Roof, blew everyone's mind that just how much can a person change. His induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Led Zeppelin in 1995 was a well-deserved achievement due to his enduring impact on the music world. And even in 2023, Billboard ranked Plant as number four on their list of the 50 greatest rock lead singers of all time. Well, you must be wondering, just how can a person win so much? And it's a real question. So let's go into detail about his career to understand just what made him so motivated. Following the dissolution of Led Zeppelin in 1980, Robert Plant briefly thought of leaving the music industry and pursuing a career in teaching within the Rudolf Steiner education system. Despite being accepted for teacher training, Plant ultimately chose to scratch that idea and pick up his guitar to go on a solo career. It was a decision that was very hard, but thanks to the influence and encouragement of his fellow musician Phil Collins of Genesis, he decided to give it a go. Plant's solo journey started with the release of his debut album, Pictures at Eleven, in 1982, which was followed by The Principal of Moments in 1983. These albums featured hit tracks like Big Log, In the Mood, and Little by Little, which became the base of Plant as a solo artist. Throughout the late 1980s and early 1990s, Plant collaborated with keyboardist and songwriter Phil Johnstone on three solo albums which were Now and Zen in 1988, Manic Nirvana in 1990, and finally Fate of Nations in 1993. These albums showed just how versatile he can be, and with tracks like Tall Cool One and I Believe, he got recognized as a legendary solo artist. Despite Led Zeppelin's disbandment, Plant continued to collaborate with Jimmy Page on various projects, and together they formed the Honey Drippers in 1984. They released an EP and achieved commercial success with hits like Sea of Love, and Rockin' at Midnight. Plant and Page's collaboration was more than just a business deal. They helped each other out, and on one occasion, during Page's solo efforts and live performances, Plant even gave an appearance at the Atlantic Records' 40th anniversary concert in 1988. Plant's fondness for live collaborations with renowned musicians was well known, and on one occasion, he joined Queen on stage at Wembley Stadium for the Freddie Mercury tribute concert in 1992. His performances of Queen's Innuendo and Crazy Little Thing Called Love, along with Led Zeppelin classics like Kashmir and Thank You, 
further set his status as a rock icon. From 1994 to 1998, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant went on a fruitful and successful collaboration. They released the acclaimed album No Quarter Jimmy Page and Robert Plant Unleaded in 1994. This marked their return to the spotlight as a performing duo, which made the audiences love them even more, with new arrangements of Led Zeppelin classics and innovative instrumentation. Their subsequent tour in 1995, which included a memorable performance at the Glastonbury Festival, was one of their greatest performances. After the Walking into Clarksdale tour, Plant returned to his solo career again. It was the time when he was on world tours and explored new musical paths. In 2007, he collaborated with Alison Krauss on the Grammy-winning album Raising Sand, which confirmed his versatility as an artist. In 1999, Plant contributed to the tribute album for Skip Spence. It was because of his admiration for the Moby Grape co-founder and his collaboration with Afro-Celt sound system on the song Life Begin Again was another hint of his ongoing interest in Welsh culture. In 2002, Robert Plant released Dreamland with his newly formed band, Strange Sensation. It was garnering widespread acclaim for its collection of blues and folk remakes. He did not stop here and continued this success. Plant and Strange Sensation released Mighty Rearranger in 2005, which featured the original songs that received favorable reviews and four Grammy nominations. As a former member of Led Zeppelin, Plant, along with Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones, received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2005 and the Polar Music Prize in 2006. From 2001 to 2007, Plant actively toured with Strange Sensation and kept on pleasing audiences with a mix of solo material and Led Zeppelin favorites. Plant's musical ventures weren't just traditional tours like other artists. No, not at all. His efforts on music were very notable with his appearances at festivals like Festival Au Désert in Mali and the Benefit for Arthur Lee concert in New York. His contributions to tribute albums, such as the Fats Domino tribute album in 2007, are just another gem in his crown. Robert Plant's personal life has been marked by both wins and tragedies. He married Maureen Wilson on 9th of November 1968, and the couple had three children together, Carmen Jane, Karak Pendragon, and Logan Romero. However, their happiness was shattered in 1977 when their five-year-old son, Karak, passed away during Led Zeppelin's U.S. tour due to a stomach illness. The song All My Love, which was co-written with John Paul Jones, was a poignant tribute to Karak. When he got divorced from Maureen in August 1983, Plant welcomed another son, Jesse Lee, with Shirley Wilson, who was Maureen's sister. Despite the personal challenges he faced, Plant remained deeply committed to his family and found calm in his music. Beyond his musical pursuits, Plant has been actively involved in philanthropic endeavors and has shown a keen interest in Welsh history. He generously donated funds for the creation of a bronze statue of the Welsh Prince Owain Glyndwr, which is proof of his connection to Welsh heritage. Plant's contributions to Welsh cultural initiatives reflect his deep-rooted appreciation for his ancestry. In recognition of his significant contributions to music, Plant was appointed as the Commander of the Order of the British Empire, CBE, in the New Year Honours List 2009. His investiture by Prince Charles further highlighted his esteemed status in the music industry. Not only that, Plant was even honored by his beloved football club, Wolverhampton Wanderers, when he was named the club's third vice president in August 2009. His lifelong affinity for the club was rewarded by this post, and he was oh so happy about it. In 2007 and 2008, Robert Plant collaborated with bluegrass sensation Alison Krauss resulting in the formation of the legendary duet album, Raising Sand. It was produced by T-Bone Burnett, and the album had a blend of R&B, blues, folk, and country tunes from various songwriters, including Mel Tillis, Towns Van Zant, and Tom Waits. Raising Sand received lots of praise and commercial success, not only that it even earned him multiple Grammy Awards, including Album of the Year and Record of the Year Awards. Following the album's success, Plant and Krauss went on an extensive tour across the U.S. and Europe, 
and performed music from Raising Sand alongside reworked Led Zeppelin classics. Their performances at iconic festivals like the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival and Bonnaroo Music and Arts Festival granted them the title of a dynamic musical duo. In 2021, Plant and Krauss reunited for the release of Raise the Roof. It was a studio album featuring 12 tracks that were produced by T-Bone Burnett. The album was their return to collaborative work and was accompanied by a globally live-streamed set from Nashville's Sound Emporium Studios. In addition to his collaboration with Krauss, Plant even looked into new musical regions with the formation of the Band of Joy in 2010. After he revived the name of his first band from the 1960s, he included talented musicians in the new group such as Patty Griffin, Buddy Miller, and Daryl Scott. Their self-titled studio album was released in 2010 and won them a Grammy nomination for Best Americana Album. Plant and the Band of Joy started going on tours across the U.S. and Europe while exciting audiences with their eclectic blend of Americana and rock influences. The band's final scheduled performance took place at the Big Chill Festival in Herefordshire in 2011, and that was the end of their musical journey together. Top of form, Robert Plant's musical journey continued with the formation of the Sensational Space Shifters in 2012. The band made its debut at the WOMAD Festival in England. It comprised former members of Strange Sensation, including the guitarist Liam Skin, Tyson, Justin Adams, Billy Fuller, and John Baggett, along with Dave Smith and Joel de Camara, the band initially garnered attention for its unique lineup. Patty Griffin joined them as a special guest for some early shows before starting on her album release and subsequent tour. In July 2012, the Sensational Space Shifters released a live album titled Sensational Space Shifters. It featured a mix of reinterpretations of Strange Sensation and Led Zeppelin songs covers and guest appearances by Patty Griffin. The band's eclectic blend of musical styles and captivating performances quickly earned them an obsessive following. In 2014, Robert Plant and the Sensational Space Shifters released Lullaby and the Ceaseless Roar. It was now Plant's 10th solo album and the first studio recording with his new band. The album showcased Plant's adventurous spirit and the band's collective talent. It had all the blending elements of rock, folk, and world music. Their performance at the Glastonbury Extravaganza in June 2014 further solidified their reputation as a formidable live act. Following the album's release, Plant and the Sensational Space Shifters went on a North American tour in autumn 2014. It thrilled audiences with their dynamic performances. The band continued to showcase their rock with a special 10-inch live EP titled More Roar, which was released for Record Store Day 2015. In September 2015, during a concert in New York City, Plant gave the world a hint that he might have plans for a new album with the sensational Space Shifters. The band's dedication was further demonstrated in April 2015 when Plant headlined a tribute event for American folk legend Lead Belly at the Kennedy Center. It was the greatest collaboration with Alison Krauss, Victor Krauss, and Buddy Miller. In 2016, Plant contributed to the British Red Cross's compilation LP, The Long Road, with a cover of Elbow's track, Blanket of Night. It was at this point that the world realized that he had an ongoing engagement with social and humanitarian issues. Later that year, Plant joined artists like Emmylou Harris and Steve Earle for select dates on the Lampedusa Concerts for Refugees Tour. It was for the sole purpose of raising awareness and funds for educational programs for refugees. Plant's musical journey with the Sensational Space Shifters continued with the release of his 11th solo album, Carry Fire, in October 2017. In recognition of his contributions to music, Plant received the AMA Lifetime Achievement Award at the UK Americana Honours and Awards in 2018. Despite his legendary status, Plant remains grounded and connected to his roots. He resides in Shatterford, near Bewdley in Worcestershire, where he continues to draw inspiration from his surroundings. His commitment to supporting local initiatives, such as the Community Buyout Scheme to Save the Bath Music Venue, reflects his desire to give back to the communities that have shaped him. 
In 2020, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, Plant once again demonstrated his generosity by donating money towards frontline medical supplies. His contribution to a small clothing manufacturer in Kidderminster, England, aimed to support efforts to provide essential medical equipment to local hospitals, highlighting his ongoing commitment to humanitarian causes. Robert Plant's enduring legacy extends beyond his musical accomplishments. He has inspired generations of artists with his distinctive vocal style and expressive performances. His influence on the rock genre is immeasurable, earning him accolades such as being named the greatest voice in rock by Planet Rock and receiving the Outstanding Contribution to Music Prize at the Q Awards. Plant's impact on the music industry is undeniable, and his contributions continue to resonate with audiences worldwide. As he navigates the ever-changing landscape of music, Plant remains a revered figure whose artistic legacy transcends generations. Now there you have it, all of his life explained in this video. We hope that you like it.